When my daughter asked me for a vanity table for her birthday, I wanted to challenge myself a little bit. And you know what? I really did. With this project and the previous build series, the desk that I made my son, I decided to go all in on the home center pine. I found some really nice cleared boards. And although they had a little bit of, you know, bowing and cupping and whatnot, it wasn't a big deal. I'm starting by just truing up an edge because I want to make sure it's nice and flat before I do any processing. You might have noticed that this project has some legs that are partially turned and that's on purpose. Like I said, I wanted to challenge myself and so I have a whole other video in which I show the lathe build. It's a um, spring pole lathe Roy Underhill design. It's just, you can disassemble it, so it's kind of portable, I guess. And then I also have another video where I show myself making one of the legs. It wouldn't actually make the cut for this project, but it was a great first attempt. And then I made four new ones. Here what I'm doing, I'm just basically taking one by 12 stock, breaking it down, and these are gonna be the actual carcass main parts, the sides. Because I wanna have a lot of drawers for this, I wanted to get something that was quite large and I wouldn't have to glue up boards. And it turns out that these were, like I said, nice and clear, not that expensive, and it saved me a lot of time not having you go from rough stock. I'm really only gonna true up one edge on all of these because I just need to measure off the one edge, the final edge, to get my measurements or my dimensions. You'll see here that because my square isn't long enough to reach all the way across the board, I butt up a metal ruler right next to it to extend the reach, basically. The reason I went with 1x12s was because it ends up at 11 and a quarter inches, and so I have very little actual material to remove to get down to the 11 inch sides that I need. And here it's just a matter of taking my number six, heavy set cambered iron and just taking it all the way down. And then just basically, once I get it close, I come back with the number eight, light cut, and smooth everything out and get it flat. Referencing off the edge that I actually did square and true up, I'm gonna mark in my tenons, and then off that line that I marked, I'm gonna use that flat ruler there to just mark the total distance that I need between tenons. Because the sides must be identical to be square, I'm gonna take the other piece, and you can see I haven't even bothered to true it up, and I'm just gonna transfer the lines onto it instead of measuring. And you'll notice I'm always making sure to use the same reference edge. With these lines marked, I bring the pieces back together to see how close I am, and I'm spot on. That means I can go ahead and create the knife line that will guide the cut when I saw out the tenons. Just like before, I'm going to measure the space between my tenons to get the exact distance I want here. I'm not going to measure in from one edge and measure in from another edge or try to make the board exactly the length I need. All I need is the space to be the same and the tenons can be whatever length they are.
this marking gauge is going to end up being very critical to making everything look good. I'm going to leave it set at this one quarter inch as long as I possibly can. And I'm going to mark all boards with this tenon that needs a one quarter inch because my tenons are going to sit back from the face of the board a quarter inch and I can just use this over and over and over anytime I need that exact measurement. So it won't change basically during the life of the project as long as I need to mortise some tenon. Now I'm going to take the exact chisel I'll use to do the mortising, bring it up to the line I just gauged, and then I'll make an impression in the wood. And that'll give me the thickness of the tenon of what it needs to be to match the future mortise. Then I'll bring a gauge up to that, a brand new one, and set it off the back side. I'll end up having to do this for each individual board, resetting this gauge. It's not that important, as long as it matches that chisel. And since a lot of the boards have varying thicknesses, even though it's straight off the shelf, you just can't be sure. Now, I had considered using like a rabbit plane for this, but I decided to saw it just to make absolutely certain that this was accurate because I can saw about a millimeter away from the line and then chisel back to it. I didn't show how I laid this out, but basically I left about a half inch on either side to sort of cover it up. And I didn't want to have a full 11 inch long tenon there. And basically I left an inch or two, an inch and a half in the middle between each tenon. So we don't have an 11 inch long mortise. And that leaves some meat in the middle to help strengthen the leg. Make sure you orient the board correctly with the way it's going to eventually fit into the mortise and just mark it out.
Now this is a very common thing in a lot of furniture making where you'll have mortises that will intersect and here you're going to see actually the chisel is going to blow through into the other mortise and that's okay. In fact, uh, it's quite normal and what you'll have to do is whenever the tenons come together, you have to bevel them, uh, one or both of them, to make them join nicely and uh, not interfere. Well, here we are. The main structural components of the carcass are done. We've got mortises, we've got tenons, everything's fitting nice and tight, no real gaps, everything squares up fine. At this point, we've got to make the front, the drawer structure, the internals, the top, and the finishing details. And that's where I'm going to leave it. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you around for the next time. Mm -hmm.